Welcome to the Palestine Church audio podcast. We hope you enjoy this message by Pastor James Warren. For more great content and updates from Palestine Church, please visit us at palestinechurch.com. Open with me to uh, Acts, the book of Acts, and chapter 2. Hmm. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a little while before we get there, but that's where we're going to get, and we're going to land in Acts chapter 2. And... Uh, just want to say what an honor and privilege it is to see Jeff Collins back around here for a weekend. Yes, amen. Jeff is like the wind. <laughs> and we all love the wind. The wind cools us off and it's so refreshing. And um, no, it really is an honor. And this morning I'm going to be sharing, I'm going to be completely honest with you that I don't know exactly what I'm going to be sharing. I know where I'm going. I just don't know how we're going to get there. And um, I, uh, I had a sermon prepared for this morning and um, when I woke up this morning uh, that was not the sermon for this morning. And so that's okay. <laughs> God's God's good. He's he's better than than I could ever be. So we're just gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go for it. In Ezekiel chapter eleven and verse nineteen, the prophet Ezekiel speaking to the the children of Israel says. I will give them, and I will give them one heart and a new spirit I will put within them. I will remove the heart of stone from from within them. Excuse me. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my rules and obey them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. In Ezekiel, the prophet is declaring the word of the Lord to the children of Israel. And um, this was just a shadow of what God was going to do through Christ Jesus. And salvation, our belief in him. And through the work of the Holy Spirit, he would put inside of each one of us a new heart. And he would take from us the heart of stone that we had and give us a new heart that's a heart of flesh. And that with this new heart inside of us, this new inner man, we would now be able to obey God's law. We would now be able to be righteous. And walk righteously. Not because of what we've done. But because of what Jesus has done on the cross. Jesus has made a way. Jesus has made a way where there was no way. And the Holy Spirit. Living inside of us. Wow. That God would even give us himself to live inside of us. That's really good news. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5.17, he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. This morning, what I, I feel to go after is um, our desires. I feel like this morning that God wants to, through his word, help us 
uh, realize, and even, uh, even this morning, I feel that God wants to begin to purify our desires this morning. And we know that for most of us, and if, if you're visiting and maybe you're new to this Christianity thing, you don't fully understand this, but, but we've seen throughout the word and it teaches us that when Jesus comes to live inside of us, that everything that was old about us is now made new. And we're a brand new creature. We're a brand new being. And what that means for us is even our desires are now, the way I like to say it is that they're bent a different way. In, when you were in darkness, when you were living in sin, your desires were bent towards unrighteousness. They were bent towards darkness. They were bent towards sin. And in this moment when, when God comes and makes his home inside of us, now we have new desires and a new being and we are no longer bent towards sin we're now bent towards righteousness. And when we sin, we are no longer sinners. We're saints who are acting out of character. <laughs> See, because through Jesus, we have been made righteous. And we are, when God looks at us, he sees Jesus. Therefore, he sees a spotless lamb. He sees a sacrifice in which there was no sin. So when you do struggle, when you do slip up, and I'm saying when you do, because you do and you will, and you will continue to, but know that you're acting out of character. And who you are in Christ is the righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so Ezekiel prophesying so many years ago that one day God would put inside of us a new heart. And before when we lived in darkness and in sin, there was no possible way for us to fulfill or satisfy the law, if you will. No matter how good you were, no how, no matter how high your moral standard was, it was as filthy rags to God. But with Christ in us, we are no longer under the wrath of God. But now we live in his joy and in his pleasure. And we live in this place where God's blessings and his favor are just poured out constantly in our lives. Ephesians chapter 4, you don't have to turn there, but it says it this way. In verse 17, it says, Now this I say and I testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding. They're alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of heart. Remember what Ezekiel was talking about? And then he says, they have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy, uh, they're greedy to practice every kind of impurity. Verse 20, but that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus to put off your old self, which belongs to the former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Your old hardened heart, callous because you, the desires that you had, you thought were right and true, but you were deceived by those desires. That's not who you are anymore when you're in Christ Jesus. Right. And when we set our mind on God's, on the things above, on, on, on God, our mind is renewed and we are constantly being reminded of who we are in Christ Jesus. 
and in his righteousness and his holiness. This new self, this new person that you are, is created in the likeness and the image of God. Yay, Jesus. <laughs> Let's keep going. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses, verse 14, by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and the authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. You're a new creation. (laughs) And God has put himself inside of us. And he's called us, commissioned us to walk out into the world as image bearers of God. Are you in Acts chapter 2? We're almost there. (laughs) When you get this this new life, God gives you new desires. And I'm not at all saying that you won't battle old desires. And as we saw in Ephesians chapter 4, old things coming up, but God has put new desires inside of us. And those desires are for him. And we desire him and we desire him. God has given us these desires. In Acts chapter two, you guys know the story. The Holy, this is when the Holy Spirit falls on, on God's people and turns the world upside down. And what I want to get at this morning is is what it looks like or some of the evidences that should be in our life when the Holy Spirit is alive in us. How many of you know that God in us, the Holy Spirit inside of us, sometimes only moves as much as we let him? (laughs) And you know... Many times it's not until we get outside of ourself do we begin to experience God. We get outside of our mind, outside of our flesh, and then we begin to realize that God is available and doing something. And I want to just, what I'm, what I'm talking about this morning, I pray that you've never heard it before, that this is just a reminder. Some of this may be new, more than likely not. This is just where God led me this morning, and I'm sorry it's not so polished. But this is what I just want to just challenge you with this, that God has has called us to live an abundant life, a life that's full. John 10, 10. I mean, an abundant life. And, And the only way that we can get that is through him. Is through finding all of our satisfaction and our joy in God and in Jesus Christ. And, and the Bible, the commands of the Bible and, and, and the things that we see, sometimes we get so legalistic and, and we, we live by the commands and we forget to live by the relationship that God paid such a high price for to interact with us in an intimate way. And, and as wonderful as the Bible is with, in principle, and in, in commands and in morality, a moral law, it's not the end game. God has called us to a relationship. And actually the way that we read the Bible should be in relationship with the Holy Spirit. With the author of the Bible, we begin to interact in a relationship so that the words are not just words, but it's life and it's bread and it's something that feeds us and fuels our spirit man 
as we begin to interact with God and his word in that way. Not speaking directly about like the theology of the Bible and the theology of the New Testament, but the practicality. I love to think of, 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 of like especially the New Testament in sh- giving us a picture of what it looks like. Because we can talk all day about you know, um, things that are up here in the spirit realm. But God not only lives in the spirit realm, but he also lives in our physical realm. And some people say, well, you know, God doesn't value the physical realm, but that's not true because he sent his son to our world and made him flesh among us so that we could taste, see, and feel him. Like that's how much he wanted heaven in our world. (laughs) And he wanted to reconcile and redeem us to himself. And so I, I, I see this and I say, God's giving us a glimpse an image, a picture, a a movie, if you will, that we could see what it looks like. Because we can stay up here of like, yes, I'm, I'm a, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. And we get lost in that. Boy, man, we just soar up into the heavens, (laughs) you know, and we can miss the reality that God wants of us manifesting as sons and daughters of the most high here on earth. For his glory. And so in Acts chapter 2, we see, if you will, the evidence, the results of a community that's been encountered by the Holy Spirit. And there's some things that this community does that are beyond their culture, they're beyond their religious beliefs. But they were a direct result of their encounter and love with God through the Holy Spirit. Verse 42. Are you in Acts chapter 2? We're almost there. Okay. We're halfway there. Living on a breath. No, I'm just talking. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the, fellowship, and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Verse 43, and awe or fear came upon every soul and many signs and wonders were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as they had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. Verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Your desires will determine your devotion. I'll say it again. Your desires will determine your devotion. And a people got so wrecked with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2 that God rewired their desires. When we see in verse 42, it says this is what they devoted themselves to. This is what they devoted themselves to. I love this quote by D.L. Moody. It says, our greatest fear should not be of failure, but of succeeding at something that doesn't really matter. You know, we have so many desires and so many things that we devote ourselves to. Do we ever stop And ask, are we devoting ourselves to the things that really matter? Do we desire the one thing that really matters? Mm -hmm. 
your desires will determine your devotion. The first thing they were devoted to was the apostles' teaching. And praise God for the canon of Scripture. We still have the apostles' teaching to this day. If you desire the Lord, you will desire the things that he desires. The closer we become to him and with him, the more our desires, our wants, will align with the desires and the wants that God has. I know I've said this before, but God is more invested in your life than you are in it. God would put himself inside of you and give us the opportunity to surrender to him, to seek his kingdom first, And to continue to seek him until that moment comes and we stay in that place where his desires become our desires. You know, that's where that's where real intercession happens, right? Sometimes we knock and we're just knocking for our own desires. Sometimes, if we're feeling very righteous, we'll be praying for someone else. And that's good. But real intercession happens when we come to the place where we are, like in John 17, one with him. And we begin to pray, not our prayers, not our desires, not the things that we want to see, but the things that God has desired to release. And now God is rearranging everything inside of us to line our desires up with him. The first thing these people devoted themselves to was the word of God. To the apostles' teaching. We need to, God, give us a desire to consume your word. God, give us a desire to consume your word. Let it be our devotion. Second thing was the fellowship. To the fellowship How many of you know that God loves his his bride? He loves the church. When you desire God and his kingdom, you will begin to desire the things that he desires. He desires his word (laughs) to be made real in us. He desires his bride to be built up and made into that beautiful spotless bride that she will be one day. You know, we're not here just to sing songs and be together. We're here to be the bride. We're here to be church. We're here to fellowship with one another, to share with one another, in one another's suffering, in one another's rejoicing, in one another's celebration. Whatever it is, we're here to share in that. To the breaking of bread and the prayers. These are the four things. This is a picture of what it looks like when the Holy Spirit is wrecking your life. You begin to love the word, the church, the breaking of the bread, and prayer. This is a picture of what it means for the Holy Spirit, what it looks like every day for the Holy Spirit to be in your life and alive. And I want to talk for a moment about the breaking of bread. You know, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And they would come together and they would remember the sacrifice that Jesus sacrificed his body. And it's through that sacrifice that God made a way for you and I to enter into a relationship with God. And I was reading this and I I realized something so amazing about the breaking of the bread. Obviously, we see in the remembering of the sacrifice of God's body, of Jesus' body that was broken for us. You know, but there's something else. 
Because the apostles taught the New Testament church, and we know this today, that we, as followers of Jesus, are to actually share in the suffering of Jesus Christ. As disciples, followers of Jesus, we actually get to be a part of the thing that he was suffering for. And I don't know if you've ever sat beside or walked with people who were on the same mission and the same purpose to see the kingdom of God manifested here on the earth. And you've ever broken bread with them and eaten with them. And the camaraderie that comes from being a part of the same mission and the same purpose in suffering with Christ. I can just imagine these believers as they sat around that table and the Holy Spirit was moving in their community and they were not only thinking about what Jesus had done, but their hearts were connected in that each one of them were doing their part and suffering for the sake of the gospel. It's more than just a social club. There is a fellowship that we can enter into with one another in Christ Jesus. It's the John chapter 17. God, make them one as we are one. When the Holy Spirit is alive inside of you, there is a desire to be around one another and to become one. One in our focus, one in our mind, one in our mission to see the gospel transform our city. Jesus is not still hanging on the cross. He's alive and he's alive in you and he's alive in me. And he wants to get out in this city and transform a place. And there's a level of fellowship that you can have with your brothers and sisters. I mean, it's in Jesus. It's in the Holy Spirit that we are, we are serving and laying down our lives just like Jesus did. We're not bearing his cross because no, because no one could bear that cross, but we're bearing our cross. And you're bearing yours and I'm bearing mine and we're together. And then prayer. God, what would happen if we just begin to pray? Stop complaining and stop praying. Start praying. Stop complaining. Start praying. All of these things, I'm not here to challenge you to get more disciplined. I'm not here to say, beat yourself on the back so you'll wake up earlier. Wake up earlier. I mean, if you need to, you need to wake up earlier. But I'm not here. (laughs) You know. I'm not saying. All I'm saying is. Let's desire God. When you want God more than anything else, your desire will determine your devotion. Don't get hung up on the devotion. Go for the desire. When you get, when you seek the kingdom first, all these things will be added to you. Like, just make God your everything. Make him your the one thing that you're pursuing, the one thing that you desire, the devotion will come. The devotion will come once you get the desire. And the thing is this, it's who you are. It's the work's already been done. The heart that you need to desire God, if you are born again, is inside of you right now. The Spirit Himself is desiring God. This is the connection that's coming as the Spirit, the God, the part of God that's in you is desiring the God. And we're drawing near. Lord, would you melt away? every other desire, Lord, every selfish ambition that we have, Lord, 
Lord, that our lives would be centered on you, God. That you would become our everything, God. Lord, we value you. Lord, open our eyes to see your worth. Lord, we're sick and tired of giving our life to so many things that they don't even matter, God. Lord, let us see, even this morning, give us an eternal perspective, God. This time here on earth, It's but a mist, God. It's but a vapor, Lord. We're here today. We're gone tomorrow, Lord. Lord, we're here to live lives that count. We're here to live lives that matter, God. We're here to pursue you, God, to seek you. Why don't you stand this morning?